Okay, so it's Cat Stanley Space Demon coming at you again. And today I want to talk about Susie Quattro, Gene Simmons' bass playing. Now, rocker Susie Quattro might be best known to folks in the States for her reoccurring role as Leather Tuscadero on the mega-hit sitcom Happy Days back in the late 70s. Or you might remember her 1979 hit duet with Chris Norman, Stumbling In, which reached number four on Billboard's Hot 100 chart. But the Detroit-born bassist vocalist actually rose to fame a few years earlier in the UK, where she rode the crest of the decade's glam rock wave. She'd had some local success with the Detroit all-girl garage rock band called The Pleasure Seekers, which also included her sisters Patty and Arlene. Now, Quattro would move to England in 1971 to record with producer Mickey Most. Now, Most had helmed scores of hit singles for a bevy of acts, including groups like The Animals, Herman's Hermits, Donovan, and the Jeff Beck Group. Now, her first single, a song called Rolling Stone, reached number one in Portugal in 1972 and was followed by million seller Can the Can, which topped the charts in Australia and parts of Europe. Now, singles called 48 Crash and Devil Gate Drive would also sell a million copies each, earning gold discs, and Quattro would hit the road supporting acts like Thin Lizzy, Slade, and Alice Cooper. But by the time she came home to headline Detroit's Michigan Palace Theater in April 1974, her support band would be none other than fledgling Thunder Rockers, KISS. And in 2013, Quattro had this to say about the band KISS. I headlined Michigan Palace for two shows, and KISS was my opening act. It was my first time back since I'd had recording success with my English band, so that was pretty cool. I watched their set and thought they were an unusual act. They dressed pretty funny. The best thing they had going for them was their image. The crowd treated them more like a curiosity as it was still pretty early in their career, and not many people knew who they were. I get a kick out of thinking KISS opened for me pretty early in their career. She goes on to say, I brought that up to Gene Simmons many years later when I did his TV show Rock School. Now you might remember Rock School, it was a VH1 reality series Gene hosted. Uh, He went over to England and tried to teach a bunch of English school children how to be rock stars. It was basically just a rip off of the Jack Black movie School of Rock. Gene took that and turned it into a reality show. But anyways, she goes, I said to him, first of all, I'll have to teach you how to play bass guitar. And then she laughed. And second, don't ever forget you supported me. And then she laughed some more. She goes, he knew I was a serious bass player, so he took it all tongue in cheek. Now, the implication being that Gene Simmons was never a serious bass player, and I would probably agree with that, but I think it's an unfair thing to say because I think Gene's thing was, he was always more of a songwriter than a bass player because, you know, back when he first started out, long before he joined KISS, he actually played guitar and he moved to bass later because obviously... It was tougher to find bass players. Most guys wanted to play guitar, so Gene decided to move to bass. And I think Gene's approach to bass was more from a songwriting standpoint. You know, uh, you know, I don't think Susie Quattro was ever a prolific songwriter. She had some hit songs, but I think she mostly did other people's material. She did a lot of covers early on. I know she had outside songwriters. I know she did do did write some of her own material, material, but I don't think she was as prolific as somebody like Gene Simmons who took it, took the bass guitar from a songwriting standpoint. He wasn't trying to come up with the most clever bass lines. He would probably approaches the bass more as, you know, as an instrument. He approaches it more from a chord progression standpoint rather than a riff or a, 
you know, clever baseline standpoint. So I'll, I'll defend Gene on that. Yeah, he's not a virtuosic bass player. He's not a lead bass player. You know, you wouldn't put him in the category with a Getty Lee or even a Susie Quattro. But Gene uh, did what he had to do to get things done in Kiss. And I'll stand up for my boy Gene Simmons. You know, I like to have a lot of fun at the guy's expense, Gene and Paul. But when I, when uh, you know, when it comes down to cut the nuts, I'll stand up for my boy Gene Simmons uh, when the time calls for it. But that's the video. What do you guys think? Uh, is Gene Simmons not a serious bass player? Do you think he sucks or do you think he, he does, does it good for what he has to do? What do you guys think? Um, I hope you dug this one and we'll see you next time. Who's here? <laughs>